Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Parasite and Love, which is a body horror game where you've been infected by a brain eating amoeba that also happens to really love you. A rare infection from a brain eating amoeba is being blamed for the death of a North Carolina man who was swimming in a water park early this month. The amoeba is usually found in shallow fresh water. It can cause severe headaches, fever, nausea, vomiting, which can progress into having a stiff neck, seizures, and a coma. It also makes anime boys appear before you. That's the, that's the big one. Numero uno. Side effect. It's only infectious when water is forced up the nose during activities such as diving and water skiing. According to the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, the amoeba is rare, but overwhelmingly deadly. Don't swim in stagnant water. In the last 57 years, there have only been 145 known infections. But of those, only four survived. The CDC says the illness is particularly difficult to treat because it is notoriously hard to detect and progresses so quickly. The next time you go swimming, wear a nose plug and avoid activities that involve pulling fully submerged in freshwater areas. This is Gabe Stewart at NBS News. Day 1. You feel a rush of happiness as you continue your hike, because you hear nothing but nature around you. The birds are chirping, the wind is rustling from the tree branches, and the water is trickling nearby. You're gonna have a bad time. It is so peaceful compared to your busy office that it's currently far, far away from you. The hundreds of emails you get as a project manager can wait until you return from your vacation. You finally arrive at the lake. The photos you looked through online couldn't convey the beauty of this place. You're so glad to stop here before entering the cabin you ran for your little vacation. Time to swim as a reward. The hours you spent hiking make you dip in the water all the more refreshing. Oh boy! Should hope I'm not infected by an anime boy! Waves of relief <laughs> wash over you as you swim around, and after a while you let yourself float to enjoy the moment. You close your eyes and your breathing slows. The sun heats up your face while the water cools your back. You hear a scream, and a wave pushes you to the side. You stabilize yourself, coughing and spluttering for air, trying to clear water from your mouth and nose. The boy laughs as he bobs up right next to you. He smells brightly without a care in the world. Be careful, you could have hurt us both. But nothing happened! His mother calls for him, and he swims away. As he steps out of the water, his mother has already has a towel in the hand and dries his hair. Hope you get a brain-eating anime boy in your brain. You're a little envious. Clumsy of your words outside of work, you have a hard time connecting more with the people you love. Your friends and family do like to spend time with you, but you sometimes feel lacking when you try to show them the same affection. Maybe you would have an easier time if you had a family of your own. Your friend did tell you that her instincts as a new mother help immensely when taking care of her baby. You hope that in your case, the instinct would take over in t talking to your child. How great would it be to have such a deep connection? You sigh and rise from the lake. You arrive in the cabin you have booked for the next two weeks. The space is too big for just one person, but it also feels luxurious to have so much space for yourself. You're basically checking this place out as a vacation home for your future family that you always dream of. Even if you don't have a partner, the thought of taking a trip together fills you with joy. By the fireplace, you look at the couches where you could snuggle with your future family. You smile, imagining your child imitating a bear. Bark. As they wear the fur that drapes over one of the cushions. You stretch your arms as you yawn. Time to unpack and get settled. You put your hand into your bag and take out your vacuum-sealed clothes. You pack them this way to make space for other things. Your wallet, smartphone, food, toiletries, and some books to pass the time. After putting all your stuff away, you go and take a shower. Half an hour later, you leave the bathroom refreshed, and donning a white robe provided by the rental, walk into the couches with a grin and a glass of white wine. Now this feels like a true vacation. You take your phone out and check a valve habit from your job. Photos. Your mother sent you some digital copies of old family photos. When you were little, your family used to visit the big green house in the city center quite often. There are also some photos of you with co-workers. Why don't you take these selfies with them? You must have gone drunk at that last office party. 
Any milestone has to be celebrated as the model of your boss, so parties happen pretty often. You don't know how your boss is able to make the company pay for so many, but you don't dare ask him. You scroll further back and finally find some photos with your friends. The last time you guys met was to say goodbye to a friend in a group who was leaving the country. You should call them sometime soon. Messages. You have messages from your dad, mom, co-workers, and friends. Um... Co-worker. You immediately regret looking at this. Dad. Your dad always sends short messages like cloud strife, with a photo of the sky attached. You must have inherited his blunt wave words. Mom. She likes to nag and remind you to do things, even though it's been a year since you moved out. It can be annoying, but you know she's doing it with love. You sigh. It's gotten so much harder to meet up since your friend group became adults. Close phone. You yawn and decide to go to bed. Day 2 The sun warms your cheek and the birds chirp as you wake up. What a peaceful morning. It's been a while since you've slept this well. You check your phone and notice that you've gotten a message from your dad. Attaches a photo of Flowery Sun as waited at work. It brightens your day whenever he does this. You want to send him a photo back, so you decide that today you'll explore your surroundings, take pictures, and make some bookmarks of the flowers you find. After a quick breakfast, shower, and change your clothes, you are ready. Once you're outside, you take a deep breath. You can smell damp moss, flowers, and wet grass. It must have rained a little during the night. You take your smartphone out and start your hike. Your shoes sink in every time you take a step on the pine needle-covered ground. As you look around, the wind crests the leaves above you, making their shadows dance on the ground. Soon you spot some small purple flowers growing nestled between fallen tree trunks. You squat down and take a picture up close. You stare proudly at your photo. A dewdrop on one of the petals reflects the sunlight, making the scene feel more magical. You stand up and send to your dad, or at least you try to. You see your bad reception and give it another attempt, but it doesn't go through. You decide to send it once you have better connection in the cabin. You look at the flowers again. About forever thought they would be pretty decoration for a bookmark when dried. You carefully pick one and make your way back. After you put your bag away, you fold a sheet of paper around the flower and tuck it inside the book. You press the book shut and then stack several more books on top of it. That should make it flat and dried after a while. Then you remember to send the photo. Your dad just answered with, Nice. And seconds later, he sends a photo back. Nice. You chuckle. You used to make them together when you were younger. I miss you, Dad. You shake your head, a little embarrassed after those words escape your mouth. Somehow you can't bring yourself to send those words. You just write nice back. After a long bubble bath, you're ready to prepare your dinner. You cut the meat on the chopping board almost in a rhythmic fashion. After a while of only eating takeout, it feels good to cook for yourself again. Huh? Are you cooking? It looks good. You let go of your knife too fast and clatters onto the counter. You whip your head around. No one was there, but you had clearly heard a voice. Slowly you move around the cabin, peek into each corridor. We found no sign of anyone else in the house. Still anxious, you go back to the kitchen. You start the stove and stew the meat in the pan. The fat glistens and smell makes your mouth water. You almost forget the previous strange incident. Hungry or impatient, you grab a fork and tear into the meat. It's still a little rare and bloody. You enjoy the flavor and relax, feeling the stress from earlier leave your body. But the odd incident behind you, you're still able to find some enjoyment today. Day Triple The morning alarm almost gives you a heart attack. With half-shut eyes, you search for your phone and hastily turn off the alarm. You sit up and massage your temples. It's been a while since you had a headache this bad. So like you crawl off bed and make your way to the kitchen. Is there gonna be a weird blue anime boy there yet? Just eating breakfast? You brew some tea in hopes that will help and take it with you to the living room. Are you feeling off because of all the hiking you did? Or was it the rare meat? Several hours later. You breathe heavily as you lean against the cold white ceramic of the toilet. 
Last we had the vomit was after the last office party, after securing a multi-million dollar deal for the company. The constant flow of alcohol was the only thing making the loud music bearable. But the next morning you had to hang over from hell. You can't remember much else. Check the kitchen for bad food. You know you bought the food just before your hike. But you can't help but suspect that something you ate might have gone bad. No, not the bread or anything else in the kitchen. It's all fresh. Was it really food poisoning? Could be some suppressed stress from work finally resurfacing. Or was it too much sun after being holed up in an office for so long? You grab your phone and sit down on the couch. You decide to research some more with your phone, open your browser, or look up your symptoms. Can I actually... Oh, I can search! There we go. You're not sure why you typed that. Maybe you should call a doctor now. Just when you want to type in a number, your hand seizes up. Your phone falls onto the couch. What? What's that? You hesitate. You dropped your phone from a little muscle cramp. You've had those before. Whatever bug you've caught will probably pass by tomorrow morning. You get yourself some tea, a slice of toast, and rest for today. Day 5. Hmm, that's the incubation period for a lot of these things. You slept through an entire day, but you still feel weak when you wake up. You drink some tea and wonder if you should eat something. But you decide it would probably be better to wait out until tomorrow and give your stomach more time to rest. It would be a waste of food if you had to throw up again. You drag yourself to the fireplace and make a fire. You make yourself comfortable on the couch and watch the flames. They sway from left to right. And if you aren't careful, you could get lost in their hypnotic dance. You start to feel lonely, even as you enjoy looking at the flames. You miss your mother's chicken soup that you cook whenever you got sick. You snuggle even deeper into the blankets. Why did you get sick all alone out in the woods? Things are turning blue! Your mind drifts off and you look around the room in a daze. Is the room getting bigger? Maybe you just imagined it. <laughs> it's alright. I'm here. You forge yourself upright and seize the fireplace poker. Crashing in front of you while you search for the source of this voice. Hey everyone. You could have sworn it was right next to you. But there's no one else in this room. After what happened the other day, you've checked as much. Of course, you're the only one here, right? You back into a corner so at least you aren't ambushed from behind. You take out your phone and try to call for help. No. Hmm, look at that voice. An intense pain wells up in your head. You jolt in pain and let go of your phone. It hits the ground, he it once and falls flat. You tremble as you kneel down to retrieve it. You sigh when you see it on your phone is still intact. Okay. Whatever just made its presence known seems like it doesn't want you to call for help. You don't care. Your thumb hovers over the dial pad. You're gonna make that call. Call the police! That won't help. You only throw your phone out of fear. You just stop yourself in time. You only feel a little pain. Tears roll down your cheeks. You hate this voice. It's swimming in your head. It's seizing up your hand. It's like it's controlling you. Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero. No, no, now you sound delusional. What voice? You mean thinking, right? That's what everyone does. You're just finding your own intuition, aren't you? You close your phone and just go to bed. You hope this ends soon. Things are still turning blue. Day 6. When you open your eyes, you're not sure what you're looking at. Colors. Patterns. Why can't you focus? <laughs> Good morning. Panic floods your body. There at the foot of your bed. Grins a ghoulishly colored man. Who is he? How did he break in? You stand your nearby pillow and throw it at the intruder. But it sails right through him. You stare in sheer disbelief. Are you... A ghost? No, no. I'm a living being. We met in the lake. I was looking for a place to multiply. And you were just so warm. And so nourishing. I couldn't resist. And finally, you can see me. He leans forward. <laughs> Hi! 
I'm an amoeba. I think you humans call me Nicleria Valerie. That's a real thing, by the way. So I'm starting to see things. I need help. Wait. Are you getting a doctor? Of course. So you're trying to get rid of me. You feel intense pain as a new wave sends you into agony. How could you? We need to stay together. Don't you understand? Okay, wait, wait, please, calm down. I won't do it. Good. The pain disappears. You feel even weaker than before. Exhausted. You lay back down on the bed. He's an amoeba. He's in your head. And he's sprouted more and more of them to move around your brain. And the pain is killing you. Killing you. So, wait, aren't I just going to die then? He doesn't answer immediately. Don't say it like that, Marlo. Isn't it wonderful? We get to spend time together. You have a hard time wrapping your head around this situation. But what you do know is you're in a bad shape and this... thing won't let you call for help. Did it have to be me? Wasn't there a better place for you? No. Never. Well... Of course, it's rare for my kind to infect humans. But I see it as a sign. And you know what I saw when I got closer to your brain? Your wish for a family, Marlo. It's as strong as mine. He comes close and puts his head on your stomach. Um... This is where a baby would grow, right? He breathes in deeply. Is this how a fetus in the womb feels? Why would they ever leave their mother's body? It's so warm and comforting inside you, humans. A shudder runs for your body. You want to hit him and push him away, even though you know your hands would face through him. This is getting a little weird. More ways than one. To make this new family arrangement easier for you, I'll even let you call me Neil. Like your unrequited love from your university days. He can dig into your memories! I can offer you everything you could have, but always wanted. Why are you frowning? Not happy. You put on your poker face. Who would have thought that your days dealing with rude stakeholders would come in handy for something like this? No, it sounds good. Really good. <laughs> uh, right. But suddenly a smile fades. He sends him looks at you with worry. You are getting weaker. And you are enjoying yourself so much, too. It made me smile. What was that drink you had? White wine. Yes. I wish I could drink that with you. It's something you humans do with each other, right? Well, I guess we just have to take what we can. Mm. Is there something we could do together? Oh, how about I sit with you at the dinner table? Is this him playing house with you? Oh boy. Choices. I do like the save menu. Like, look at that kind of like flip. Like the whole like looking at like a little microscope. Well, let's go down this horrible ending. Of course, my dear. Of course, my dear. You shove down all the disgust you feel as fear has pushed you to say this phrase. Niel blinks in surprise. Then he smiles at you in pure bliss. <laughs> <sighs> oh god. Now I'm all flustered. Let's go then. After you. You walk to the kitchen while Neil follows you. You can feel his gaze on you. Your hand reaches for the pantry, but Neil interrupts you. 
You can't just eat bread alone. The order weak. How about something more... filling? I will also try to lessen the nausea. So please. You clench your fist. That's rich coming from him. You turn to the fridge to take out some eggs. You're fine if I make some scrambled eggs, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. That sounds better. The pain and nausea have truly lessened. Seems like if you humor him, you can at least keep your head clear enough to think. You hear Neil hum as you crack open some eggs and turn on the stove. Kiyosi gets a bear of you and you glance at him as the eggs sizzle. He sits on a chair at the dining table, swing left and right happily waiting for you to finish cooking. What is this madness? This peaceful scene unnerves you more than anything. But you play along for now. If you choke some bites down, he leans forward in excitement. It tastes better with some company, right? Absolutely, you're really sweet too. Brain-eating parasite. Absolutely, you're really sweet too. <laughs> he continues to hum. <laughs> meat in your brain, meat in your brain. I'm happy that there are at least some things we can do together. Ah. <sighs> What else? Oh, is it possible for us to watch something together later? I saw glimpses of... What was that? Movie dates. In your memory. My phone was a little small for us to watch something together. Oh, Okay. With mixed feelings, you turn your back to your blade. Thankfully, he at least lets you eat in peace until you're finished. You clean up and begin the fidget as you're not sure how Neil wants to continue the day. Suddenly you get goosebumps to slump down. You heave a wave of nausea surging through you. Oh no, I thought I could give you more time. Um. You reaches for your arm, but it goes right through. I wish I could help you stand. After a few seconds, your nausea dissipates. How could you survive this situation? What should you do? It's a way to be rid of him. Let's get back to bed, all right? You both shuffle back to the bedroom. You lay down on the bed and Neil sits down beside you. He strokes your hair as you gradually fall asleep. Day 7. You hardly slept and still feel weak. Oh, look. L look at the, um, the UI. It's kind of... Your neck is very stiff and the weird colors appear again before your eyes. Oh, you're awake! Good morning, dear. Oh, there's a lot of deers. You turn your head and see multiple kneels next to the bed. You suppress the urge to scream. Here! I want to show you what our children inside you look like. There's even one that looks like you. Uh, ah, here. Ah! He puts a blob of blue mass in your lap. The way it gurgles and cries, it sounds desperately like... a human baby. It coughs as some blue spit runs down its cheek. Isn't it cute? It's absolutely precious. It's absolutely precious. Manly said. You try to hug it, but you can't touch it. You're desperate to make him happy. I'm so glad you like it. It's our family, after all. He takes the baby back. Come and get breakfast once you're ready. You seem weaker today, so I'll stay silent while you sleep a bit more, alright? You nod and lay down. After a few hours, you reluctantly sit up. Your grumbling stomach won't shut up. While you walk into the kitchen, you assess your situation and try to think of a plan. Neil won't let you call a doctor, nor ever help. He loves acting like a husband to you. If you humor him, you will try to lessen the effects of the infection. But if he stays, you will certainly die. You arrive in the kitchen and Neil shows himself. So you have enough strength to eat now? Great! How do I get out of this? 
as if we somehow use his fixation on family against him. A slight headache interrupts your thoughts. What are you thinking so hard about? It's like something's moving around inside your head. What are you doing? I just want to know what you're thinking. You try your hardest to think of something positive about Neil. You can't risk of seeing what you truly think. A lovely day to spend with my Neil. A lovely day to spend with my Neil. <laughs> oh, you charm her. He sounds absolutely delighted. The headache disappears and you sign relief. I think someone in your memories has said a little caffeine helps when you have a headache. Yeah, coffee sounds great right now. You put a kettle on and shake some instant coffee into your mug. You take a yogurt cup from the fridge and get a spoon. Neil's eyes glimmer over excitement, as if he expects you to do some magic tricks. <laughs> Is yogurt good? Yeah, it's sweet and cold and refreshing. After a while, you start to play with your spoon. Maybe it's better if you only eat a bit. You don't want to upset your stomach. Come on, eat a little more. We have more mouths to feed. After all. The reminder makes you drop your spoon. What's wrong? Him. You're hearing about him and what he does to you. You stare at him with wide open eyes. You bite down hard on your lips to hold yourself back from giving a piece of your mind. Are you... angry? No, no, I know you're just worried. Well, we both want you to be healthy, right? So I'm allowed to be worried about you, right? Sure. This is a nightmare. When the water is ready, you pour some into your mug. After adding some milk, you mix the coffee and drink it. Do you feel a little better? Yes. There's a palpable tension between you two. Neil makes the first move, putting his hand on yours. Here. This might cheer you up. You see blue shapes glow and dance in the space between your hands. Do you like it? You slowly nod. All this beautiful dance of colors comforts you. It paints you that he seems to care despite being the cause of your suffering. Do you want to spend some time together? In the living room? Maybe watch the fire in the fireplace? Maybe sleep will help. I hope we can do something together tomorrow. Marlow. Now, let's go. He walks beside you as you go back to your bedroom. Tomorrow you have to get together, no matter what it takes. Day 9. You wake up in your weakest state yet. Your skull feels full and ready to burst. Your heavy limbs struggle to a move in command. Your breathing is dry and ragged. You're dead by shivers from a sweltering fever. You don't have much time left. You steal yourself and decide what you have to push through, no matter how upset he gets. You have to at least try. You just take a look up, and there he is. Hi. Sup? Good morning. You wish truly we'd just leave your body. He acts like a husband and wants to be a father. What a disgusting display of this fake family. Wait. A father. Neil? I have a question. Yes? He strokes your hair as he speaks. How you wish you could smack his hand away. I don't know, there's probably someone in this audience that's like, Yeah! You know all those types. Why do you want to be a father? Hmm. Well... I sort of already am, right? I believe I'm a pretty good at. You are a wonderful... Yes, you are a wonderful father, Neil. <laughs> Thank you, Marlo. I'm glad you think so, too. We are a wonderful family. He gives you a kiss on your forehead, but no lips touch your skin. What a tingling flare of heat. He's just an imaginary husband, after all. You haven't really moved much. Are you too weak to stand up today? It's even too hard to talk now. How about I dig deeper and see for myself? You feel something pushing and pulling inside your hand. So you remember of a relative who was struggling before their death, maybe Neil will show you mercy. You're just exhausted at this point. 
Marlo, are you this tired? You nod. I beg you, make the pain stop. Neil looks over you with worry, pacing around the room, chewing a fingernail. How about... Puts your hand on your forehead. Are you gonna, like, just give us a sweet release of death? Does this make you feel better? No, what are you trying to do? I saw... a glimpse of your memory once. Of when you were little. I believe your mother did this for you, when you were sick as well. <laughs> Silly you, I have fever then, not an infection. Guilt flashes across his face, but he shakes his head and affection returns to his gaze. I will think of a way. For now, sleep, my dear. For the last few years you spent, you drift off into a deep slumber. Day 10. You're breathing a shell as you wake up in your bed. Look how are you eyes like eroding. <laughs> Parents dance in front of your eyes and you hear Neil humming. You know he's not real, but you still feel his warmth next to you. Is it comforting? Are you scared? It doesn't matter anymore. All you know is that you're experiencing him. Hope is gone from your mind. You can't tell illusions from reality anymore. You turn your head towards Neil and try to focus your eyes on him. <laughs> Oh, how beautiful. He reaches out to you and caresses your hair. They do have voice acting for the endings, by the way. It's set on the game page. Or at least partial voice acting, anyway. You must have turned and tossed a lot in your sleep. The bed sheets are like a veil on you. Maybe this is the only way we can marry. I know we don't have a lot of time. I feel you getting weaker by the second. But don't worry. I am with you. Until death do us part. You feel him wrap you in his embrace. You never imagined death would feel so warm. Mm -hmm. You slowly close your eyes to hear Neil humming the wedding march. More like the Death March. Oh look, the uh, tile screen changed. Hmm. Well, we gotta go back and get more endings. I like the gallery. It's an interesting way to depict it. And there's the music. There's a lot of style. A lot of style to this. How they executed this. Alright, why should I play a house with someone like you? Now, if we encounter some similar dialogues, we will skip through it to the next set of new dialogue. What? What do you have to be so rude about? He comes closer and sits on the bed. Slowly, he caresses your face. Do we already have to have talk about how we should communicate? I just... Your throat closes. My presence seems to have this effect on you. How about we stay calm? All right? You nod. Your throat opens up and you're merely coughing gasp for air. It's all right. It's all right. Now let's go to the dining table, all right? You need your breakfast, after all. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead, because that's not a button line up. Next choice. I guess so. I guess you're still tired. I'm a little sad you're not as excited as I am. Sorry. Maybe I should be more patient until you get used to all this. He lets you eat in peace until you're finished. Alright, skip it ahead. I'm gonna say no to the whole baby thing, which is this. No. What? Don't call this a baby. You don't have to look at it like it's vermin. You turn around and hide inside your blankets. Leave me alone, I beg you. At least for a bit. 
Okay. Just go eat something later, okay? And then silence. After a few hours, you luckily sit up. Skip ahead. Can't risk him to see what you truly think. If only you didn't exist. If only you didn't exist. You're really cruel. It hurts, Marla. It hurts that you think of me this way. I'm really trying here. I think I need some space. And <laughs> the parasite needs some space. Then he disappears. Anxious about the way he left. You eat something and drink some tea. At least the nausea has to set in again. She just ran out of the house. Could you chance the woods and find somebody to help? You hurry towards the front door. Where are you going? Of course, he's still there. Maybe you'd like to take a walk with me? Marlo! You're weak. What are you gonna do if you collapse outside? No. Go to bed. Now. I can still walk around at least. Marlo. A wave of pain spreads through your head. I'm begging you. For your own sake. Your head pounds and forces you to your knees. Good. The pain stops. As tear rolls down your net cheek, you go back to bed. You pray that tomorrow you will find the strength to defy him. Alright, skip it ahead. You wake up in your weakest state. There we go. You can never be a good father. You can never be a good father. You're just an amoeba. You just multiply and copy yourself. You don't care about children. What are you talking about? Your head hurts, but you don't care at this point. As if you know. Oh, I do know. The question is, how to show it to him? And you get to guess, I guess it's a different memory here. Show your memory of your university crush. Show me along for something real, not whatever Neil is trying to be. You remember the real Neil, smiling. He loved his sarcastic humor, how easily he offered his help, and how soft his voice was when he had to calm you down. Despicable! Is that it? You want something more real? A human who never loved you back in the end. You deserve better, Marlo. But I guess you don't believe that's me. I can't take this. He disappears. You hope he's gone completely, but you fear that's not the case. Day 10. When you open your eyes, Neil looms over you. Or at least you believe it's him. You finally woke up? His voice is cold. Gone is every ounce of affection he had ever expressed before. Your body stiffens as panic and fear overtake you. You want to move, you want to run, but your body doesn't listen. You can only shake him before... You can only shake before him like a fawn before a wolf. Neil sighs. I really, really wanted to believe in you. I was hopeful, you know? It's so rare my kind gets to be with you humans. So I thought we were special. I thought I could build a home with you. A family full of love. He grabs your wrist and pulls you up. But you just couldn't accept me. You had to treat me like vermin. And even went so far as wanting to get rid of me. You know that it's a death sentence for me. You get medications, right? He rubs his hand into the back of yours. Just why did my love not reach you? Because you're killing me. I am sure I expressed it a lot. Surely you know how much I want a family like you. Just where did we go wrong? For a moment, disgust is all you can feel. The hypocrisy, the denial and sheer audacity of all the nonsense he's talking about makes bile rise in your throat. And then his voice breaks. Marlo, I can't help but still hold you dear to my heart. You know, because I can look into your memories and thoughts sometimes, I know how much genuine love you have for the family you want. You imagined your child running around in this very cabin. 
right? I wish I could have been the father of that lovely child. Your throat closes. The more desperately you gasp for air, the more searing the pain is in your throat. Marlo? Wait! I still have things to say! Later, bro. This is not what I wanted. I wanted to see you smile! But I could not control my anger, and now... I'm so sorry, Marlo. But don't worry. I will follow you soon. Um... Huh. All right, let's do this. Yes, we need to clean up that spit. Yes, but we need to clean up that spit. Oh, right. Takes the baby back and wipes up the spittle. Good. Are they well? Yes. We're all really healthy. Wonderful. Just great. Come get breakfast once you're ready. You seem even weaker today. So I'll stay silent while you sleep a bit more, alright? You nod and lay down. After a few hours, you reluctantly sit up. Let's give him a hand. I doubt you actually know what a great father is, Neil. What? Well, it's not in the human sense. I mean, how could you have learned if you had no one to teach you? Then tell me. Children take priority. You think I don't know that? How many of your decisions are for your own survival? How much of this is really for the survival of our children? Good. He's getting insecure. So if our choices, our difference here at the end is show the memory of your dad, show him what a great example is. This is the sway in Neil's mind. You remember their father and his big calloused hands. You stood next to him, barely reaching his waist, as you both worked on a wooden toy. He looked away for a second you took that chance to use the grinding machine. After all, your father always looked so cool when he used it. Just in time he pulled you away, injuring his own hand. He just smiled inside. Oh my little cheeky angel. Don't ever do that again. Alright? You're so cruel, Marlo. If, if I was a human... I could be the husband you want, but the father for your children, but there's no way for me to follow his example. I can't even help you stand up. I'm just a small organism. He looks completely broken, sitting on the ground like a lost child. You can always do what uh, Foo Fighters did in JoJo. It's not just about strength, Neil. It's his compassion. The will to put his own children first no matter what happens to himself. And I know what we can do for our children. Really? Yes. We don't have to welcome death so early, Neil. What? How? If you stay inside me, I will die with you. I don't mind if it's with you. You bite down your lips. Just continue. You got him where you want him. He's listening. But we're also murdering our children this way, Neil. Is that what a father does? Neil looks away. What else are we supposed to do? We go back to the lake. You and our children can survive there. Hope sparkles in Neil's eyes. The hope quickly gives way to sadness darkening his face. But what about you? We'd have to be separated for some time. But that gives me time to recover. Then I can come back and we have more time together again. But that means you have to walk there and swim in the lake. You could drown. That's what I can do as a... You really don't want to say the next word. Mother. A small sacrifice for our children. Tears form in Neil's eyes as he hugs you. The break of cold sweat in the place of his phantom touch. I'm scared, Marlo. What if I survive and you don't? Then take care of the children for me. Then I only realize now you truly love us. Thank you! Sleep for now. While you sleep, I'll try to lessen the symptoms. It can be time to gather your strength for tomorrow. 
finally agreed, like you expected. You just hope your body can keep up tomorrow. You cling to that hope as you fall asleep. Day 10. You take a deep breath as you open your eyes. Neil stands in the corner looking worried. I can breathe a lot better today. He nods. You convinced me that we should try the way, so... The least I can do is lessen the pain. But your body is still in bad shape. You will still see hallucinations, Mama. Are you sure you want to do this? You nod. This is the only way for us, Neil. Neil comes closer and caresses your face. I wish I could carry you to the lake at least. But this is all I can do. Trying to lessen the effect and wishing for the best. You swallow back the insults you want to throw in him. And your murderer in front of you. Believe in us, Neil. You bite your lips before you continue. Believe in our love. He choked on the bitter aftertaste those words leave in your mouth. Yes, my love. I will. You drag your weekend by to the bathroom to wash your face and change your clothes. Then you enter the kitchen. After you force all of one bite of toast on your throat, you're finally ready to go out. Just days ago, you were so happy to hear birds chirping here. I told you you were going to have a bad time. Now you have to try your best to not turn this into the last hike of your life. Although the colors are less aggressive than they've been for the past few days, you still see parents dance in front of your eyes. The force is changing in shape, and sometimes the sounds are piercing to your ears, but you force yourself to ignore it all just to focus on walking. You are so brave, Marlo. You suppress your urge and make snide remarks. I am just doing what I think is needed. I know, but still, you could drown. Funny how he reminds you of that when he is already killing you just with his presence. Neil, try to think positively. I am well aware of the risks, but this is the only way. The only way for me to survive. Yes. For me too, Neil. But only because he won't let you call the ambulance. Hmm. Something positive to talk about. How about our family? I will keep multiplying even there, Marlo. I will multiply and create our children this way. I will take care of them so we can all enter your body. Once you come back. Oh no, I'm nuking that. I'm, I'm just like... You know, fire shouldn't work underwater, but we're gonna make it work. We're gonna burn down that lake. It will be the family we both wanted. And with even more time to spend with each other. Like you said, we don't have to welcome death so early, but I am still worried. It is so rare that my kind infects you humans. So even when you come back... Don't worry. Just believe in our love. It is truly a special one. It will overcome the odds. Right. You will never return to this place, so... But Neil cannot know this. For he sense your deceit, he would unbury the truth in your mind. There we are. You reach for the nearest tree and lean against it. You arrive at the lake where you got infected to think we'd come back in order to survive. Be careful, dear. You take off your clothes and enter the water. Um, there is a mini game. I'm just gonna let the timer run out. See what happens. You've become too weak. Your body no longer listens, too ravaged by the infection. Gravity takes over, dragging you down into the lake. You gasp for air and the water rushes into your lungs. The smell of your mother comes to your mind. How you wish you could be next to her and be in her comfort one last time. Your throat spasms in pain. Your lungs burn and your mouth opens to scream, only to be drowned out by the unrelenting water. How long will it take for your coworkers to worry about your absence? How long until they start looking for your body? Your pain now is so intense that it stabs into you like dozens of knives. 
never be able to embrace the family you had always wanted. You gas him a few times for air again and again. Your thoughts begin to drift as your vision fades. You regret that you did not spend more time with your lover. You regret that you can never make any wooden toys of your father again. You regret not going on that trip with your friends. But more than anything, you wish you could have been given more time. Now nothing but regrets are left. And blue infectious anime boys. You burn your wish to move to your limbs, but you only respond in small movements. Panic takes holds you try not to sink. You're Neil finally faintly through the water. Marlo! Marlo, please! Stay with me! This is far enough. I can go from here! As you try to stabilize yourself, you feel your body rapidly change in temperature. You scream in agony as your nerves bear burning fever and icy chills before you hack up the water you swallowed. After several excruciating moments, you can feel heat across your entire body. In a haze, you see tiny blue patterns leave your skin and disperse into the water. These tiny amoebas leave your body fills you with joy. Finally, you are free of him. Until his best friend, like, gets infecting you instead. But then a small spot on your hand doesn't move for a few moments. You freeze and pray he hasn't heard your thoughts. Please come back to me, Marlo. He hasn't discovered your plans. At last, you give him a genuine smile. I will. Please. If not for me, then for our children. Is that gonna be the twist, like you're actually gonna come back? Of course. I love you, Marlo. I always will. Me too. He whimpers and in a broken voice says his last words. Goodbye, Marlo. Goodbye. The blue color fades and the heat along with it. You gather all your strength again and swim to the lakeside. You can't help but move away as fast as possible out of fear it might reinfect you. As soon as you touch the earth, you crawl out and cry. You scream out all the fear and pain you had to endure. Tears fall and you can't stop yourself from falling apart. You can't perform the insults you want to scream. You are so empty, it's so utterly spent that your infection rav ravaged body, acting on sheer willpower alone, is on the verge of collapse. Then a sense of relief washes over you. He's finally gone. Finally, you can return home. Is there gonna be another dark twist of this? Or we just, it's just, we're all in the clear, or it's all happy. Nope, it could just be we're all happy. Yeah, okay, so we, we were smart. We didn't do anything weird, like, yeah, we're never going back to that place ever again. Yeah, it's all the CGs. Okay, that's all endings. So that's it for Parasite and Love. This was part of the visual novel, horror, visual novel, game jam, or whatever it's going on right now. I think it was pretty well done. Um, and I don't just mean just the writing. Uh, I, I mean like the presentation. Like I said, like the UI, the uh, just the kind of way it all kind of came together. There's some real good execution there. And it's a fairly unique premise. I think there has been some Parasite-based uh, similar, similar premise games. They're not very common, but the the way it was portrayed, like horror-wise and everything, with the baby and the birthing and all that weird stuff, it's good. It, it's a little more unique than your usual fare. But our antagonist was still like kind of vaguely good-looking, so you still had like that little bit of you know kind of kick or twist to it, right? Where he, where he kind of comes off as like some very weird, toxic, abusive lover. Like one of those horror Tome games. I guess you, this would technically be a horror Tome game in some ways. Um, my only complaint would be not so much you needed more story. I, I think the length is perfectly fine. It needed... This is just a game jam limitation probably. It needed some more CGs. 
they had a decent amount, they were pretty good. But I think it would be nice to have like some subtle CGs, just like, here's Neil just in the corner and it's like a little dark, he's always constantly watching over you while you're sleeping, kind of stuff like that. And I really like the body horror ones we did get, so I, I just, when it comes to body horror, um, it's always great to have more. Because you want, you want to see it, right? It's not, body horror is not like subtle horror, it, it's like, it's got to be in your face, like it's got to make your skin crawl. And they were doing a good job with what they had. So like I said, I, I could basically, if you had the time to have more CGs and stuff like that, that good stuff like the, the baby one, would have been great. Anyway, so if you go off watch you play Parasite in Love, I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.